Hello everyone, Nubkex here and welcome, not welcome back, just welcome to the first video on a brand new channel, Nub Star Rail, where we are going to be covering Honkai Star Rail. I've been playing the game for about over a month now. I've been having a great time. And I tell you, we've got a spicy topic to kick us off for the first video. I said, let's go all in for the first one. Why the heck not? I'm going to be talking about why I actually went for Jing Yuan and pulled for him instead of going for Acheron. Yeah, we are like a day away from Acheron's release. Literally, the hype for her is at its ultimate peak. Uh, what the heck am I doing? Well, we're going to break it down here in today's video. If you want to see my other channels as well, uh, or if you've seen me before, I guess it's possible. Um, my main channel is called, well, current main channel is called Nub Raids, uh, where I cover Raid Shadow Legends. We've been doing that for, I guess, about three years. It's been a while, I suppose. It's been a while. But yeah, we've been covering that and having a great time. I'm also going to be, let's put some background footage on. This is a simulated universe run I did just earlier today. Um, I'm still still progressing through the game, right? I've only been playing for for a month. Um, but uh, I'm also going to be starting a channel this week on AFK Journey, which is a, another new gacha game, which is coming out this week. And I've quite enjoyed from doing sponsored videos on that. Um, so yeah, I decided, hey, why stress myself out making one new channel alongside, you know, my main full-time raid channel when I can super stress myself out by doing two new channels? Genius move. Zero regrets. <laughs> hey, that's what we're doing. Um, but yeah, look, look, let's dive into the topic of this video. Speaking of zero regrets, what the heck am I doing? Why did I pull for Jing Yuan instead of pulling for Acheron? What's going on? Well, let me talk to you about it. There's a few things going into it. Let's start with the more subjective stuff uh, first. Subjective thing number one, for sure for me. And we'll talk about objective things, such as uh, this character right here, Sparkle. Um, we'll talk about that. But subjective thing number one, first, a small thing. Very, very mild spoilers, uh, uh, story spoilers. But, you know, when I, I met Jing Yuan in the story, I really wasn't that impressed with him at the start. I thought, man, this guy is very formal. He seems really boring. I don't get it. Is he supposed to be cool? I didn't really get it. Uh, and then we got to the part of the story you know, with the line, you know, reinforcements. I am the reinforcements. I was kind of going, okay, okay. And then I saw him in the fight for the first time. because you know, I've been playing the, the game blind. Um, and I was like, oh, when I saw that lightning lord pop out, I kind of went, oh, okay, okay, right. No, I get it now. Oh, I see why you are the general of the Lafu. Okay, that makes sense. That's actually super cool. And that really sort of changed my opinion on this character. And yeah, I went from not really liking him to actually thinking he's pretty awesome. And I think that's really important, actually. Um, you know, looking at this game and looking into it, certainly compared to Raid, uh, where Raid is very hardcore, like super hardcore in the end game. Uh, and there's so many characters. You don't really, you know, necessarily pick your, in fact, almost ever really pick your favorite characters. It's really all about what's strongest, pretty much. Uh, there's a lot more flexibility, I think, in this game to go for characters you like, you know? I think the phrase I've seen is like waifu over meta, <laughs> you know? And that ha it does have a lot of value, right? It does have a lot of value because, you know, there's no PvP in this game. Uh, so it it's, it's doesn't have that hardcore element in the same way. I, I think that can be quite fun, right? So number one, I actually quite like the dude. Not, that being said, with Akron, I like her as well a lot. Like, Akron is freaking cool, and her animations are insane. I think everyone can agree on that. Um, but yeah, that, that was part number one. Part number two was I do also subjectively have a, a bit of a soft spot for the underdog, and it was actually quite shocking to, to see what people thought about Jing Yuan because, my goodness, it's divisive. <laughs> like, unbelievably divisive. Uh, here in the on YouTube, on, on forums, on posts, on everything. Wow, it's, it's just insane. Uh, quite funny how divisive it is actually coming in as someone who's new and an outsider and seeing this debate. It's like, what are you guys doing? Um, but yeah, uh, mid Yuan, right? He's, he's mid, he's boring, uh, don't pull for him. That, that was the advice I saw initially when I was looking into it, was like, you'd be absolutely crazy to pull for Jing Yuan. When Akron is coming out, Jing Yuan sucks, he's terrible, he's not even worth building, uh, he's just bad. And I was like, I don't, is that actually true? Like, is that actually the case? I mean, let me look into it. I'm just curious to see how good he actually is. Uh, I was actually like diving through a bunch of like MOC, 
uh, stats and stuff like that is it quite interesting, actually. Uh, and, and seeing it, this is just an interesting thing for me. We're doing some research and just getting some raw data. Um, I'm going to actually pause this video so we don't run out. Let's actually see us fighting the boss. <laughs> so let's pause that one on the side. We'll be back. Uh, but yeah, I was looking at pridewin.gg, which is fantastic. Well, first of all, like if we jump into the tier list even first, I was thinking, okay, Jing Yuan, he sucks. He's terrible. And I saw the memory of chaos tier list. And when I initially was looking at it, actually, he was an A tier. He got bumped up to S tier because of Sparkle. But I mean, right now I look at it and go, okay, people are telling me this character is absolutely terrible, but he's like an S tier damage dealer. You know, he's, he's one of the best ones in the game, but he sucks. And then we jump over to pure fiction and same thing. This character that people say is absolutely terrible. Well, he's, he's actually S tier for both. That's something has gone kind of weird here. And I was looking into the memory of chaos stuff as well. And this was interesting too. In the 2.0.2 uh, memory of chaos, which is the one on right now, the memory turbulence effect is that there's a trotter at the beginning of each cycle that takes more damage from basic attacks than dots. And when it's defeated, it's going to put uh, dots out on the rest of the enemy and whatever. And I was thinking, okay, this is a terrible one, really bad for Jing Yuan, who does not have, who basically never does basic attacks and doesn't have any dots. Well, he's got some shock if he breaks them, but very, very few dots. Not a good one for Jing Yuan at all, right? Not good. But how is he doing? And interesting enough, in MOC 12 here, he's sort of in the middle of the pack, right? These are, what is this one, the fastest cycle? And you've got certainly characters up here with the eight. And so he's more like 8.9. It's a bit behind, but it's not crazy far behind. And he's sort of middle usage. In terms of character usage, if we look at MOC 12 with the combined stuff, uh, again, he's, you know, at the upper end of the middle part, I would say. Not crazy. Uh, but not terrible either. And in fact, when we come down and we look at some of the specific teams, this is, I guess, stages 10 to 12, but he's actually in the rank five team right here, which is also kind of interesting. Uh, is he the best for this? No, he's not the best. But is this terrible character that you would never pull for? No, definitely not. I mean, interestingly enough as well, I think there's a similar thing I've seen going on with uh, Luocha right now. He's going to be uh, a rerun tomorrow, right? Uh, and people saying, Luo now the people are, I see a lot of people saying, Luocha sucks, never go for him. Uh, like Mr. Pokey, who, one of my favorites as a newcomer to this, I think he's got a fantastic channel, uh, but I think the CN community, uh, he, he's saying that, you know, they've rated Luocha as a zero out of 10, I absolutely terrible pull. I was like, that's, uh, it depends what he means by his ratings, of course. But to me, it seems a little bit misleading. This is like, hmm, Luocha, from what I can say, again, he's showing up in a lot of these top teams. So Ocha is still used all the time. He's still fantastic. Um, I think at worst, he's really a 9 out of 10. Interestingly, I think it's a similar thing with Jing Yuan and Acheron. That Acheron is a 10 out of 10. He's probably better than Jing Yuan, but he's not a 0 out of 10 because of that. You know, he's probably a 9 out of 10, right? 10 out of 10 is better the 9 out of 10, and most of the time, now I didn't, I'll explain why, but most of the time you'd pick, obviously, what would you like to get in your exam? Would you like a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10? You pick the 10 out of 10. Um, but it doesn't mean that the, the 9 out of 10 is useless. I think it's a similar thing with Luocha and Aventurine. Like, I will hopefully be going for Aventurine. I think Aventurine is going to be huge for my account, but it doesn't mean that Luocha is bad. I think Luocha would also be absolutely fantastic. I just think with me having a free Dr. Ratio, pretty big deal on a brand new account. I think Aventurine with the follow-up playstyle, I think he ties in well to that. I actually do have an E1 Bailu who I've just got from some bad luck, I suppose, or good luck, but I actually quite like Bailu as well. Uh, and, and I have obviously Lynx too. You get a free copy of Lynx. So I've got some decent healers. Um, I don't have good preservation. So I think Aventurine, he's a sensible pick for me, but like I could happily, if I really, really like Luocha, I'd happily pull for him and Again, it's not a 0 out of 10. Might be slightly worse, but yeah. Let's then dive in to... Um, well, then why did I? If I feel like, yeah, sure, Acheron is probably going to be better, because it makes sense as well, right? Power creep is a thing in gacha games. That's how they keep stuff interesting, because you know, if you don't need any of the new characters, you get bored pretty fast, right? If they're not exciting, right? So the new characters are always going to be exciting. They're going to be powerful. 
Um, why go for this older character? What's going on? Why, why choose a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10? Explain this to me. Okay, let's do it. Well, probably the biggest thing, well, two, two reasons. So number one, let's talk about Sparkle, right? So interestingly enough, when I pulled Jing Yuan, because obviously this is from earlier today and he's built, you know, I've had him for a couple of weeks at this point. I pulled him near the start of the banner. Um, at the time, uh, it was really thought that we, when we saw the initial stuff from Acheron, that Acheron was definitely going to be run with two Nihility characters and wouldn't be run with Harmony characters. Um, I actually got Sparkle. I was super lucky. In fact, that's how I got one of the Bailus. I was like, you know what? I'll go for Sparkle. She seems good. I'm actually super happy with that. In fact, Sparkle is amazing. She's so good. Uh, but I pulled 10 things for Sparkle, 10 passes, out popped a Bailu. And I went, oh, wow. Okay. Well, lost a 50 fit. Got a five star really early, but we lost the 50 50. I'll take that luck though. That's still pretty darn good luck to get a five star out of just 10 pulls. Great. Because that was right after. Uh, I hadn't pulled them since uh, getting Black Swan when I was just sort of new to the game and just pulling them for fun. Um, uh, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'll go for the rest of Sparkle, pulled another 10, and out popped Sparkle. So unbelievable luck, right, to get Sparkle. Basically out of 20 pulls and uh, a Bailu as well. Like, yeah, that's pretty great. So I had her. And I had a bunch of passes because you get so many passes, you know, when you start the game. All of the achievements giving you stellar jades, all the, the first clears of like simulated universe like this, giving you stellar jades, etc. You get a ton of, of pulls right at the start. And then obviously it falls off, but you get a ton. I had a ton of passes. And I said, okay, maybe, maybe I will go for Jing Yuan. I've got Sparkle. She is his best support. Like if we looked at those MOC uh, uh, stats, um, he's always been run with Ting Yun. I think that's a, a big one too, is that one of the best characters to run with Jing Yuan is Ting Yun. And she's a four star. She's easy enough to get. I think I have her maybe E3 or something like that from the, uh, the previous month's banner, but uh, she's easy to get and she's fantastic. She's extremely good. Arguably the best four star in the game. That's an easy combo with him. And then I had Sparkle, who's his besting in, in class support. So here I go. I could get this guy and I've got his two best supports right there. We just need someone to keep him alive. Um, not so bad. So that's an, we've an easy team ready to go pre-built for him. Okay, cool. Because I've already got the Sparkle. If I didn't have Sparkle, that would definitely be off-putting because yeah, still Ting Yun is really good. But then Ron May, I think is his next best. And I certainly don't have a Ron May and who knows when she will be back. And uh, yeah, maybe there'll be more stuff in the future, but uh, it would have been a significant chunk weaker. But the fact I had Sparkle was definitely a big thing that tied into it. Like I said, incidentally, it does look now that Sparkle's actually still really good with Acheron. Sparkle's actually just so strong that you can absolutely run Acheron with like a Pella and a Sparkle. And it's still going to be really good, especially if you don't have another, a second good Nihility to run with her. So I was like, okay, yeah, well, <laughs> but I didn't know that at the time, obviously. Um, also on top of this, um it, it, yeah on top of this the biggest thing though for me was the worry about being a new player and getting Acheron and I think this is part of that that the, some of the hate against Jing Yuan as well particularly in comparison is that Acheron she's the new shiny thing super cool we're more excited about the new stuff Jing Yuan has been in the game since the game came out not very exciting. So that sort of maybe enhances the bias a little bit for sure. Um, but yeah, Akron, she might be really good for people that have been playing the game for a long time. But for me as a new player, it's actually really difficult. You know, like I, I, I've seen some people say, oh, you know, if, if you don't, like her light cone is so powerful, so strong. Well, I just don't think that's, I mean, actually, no, it could be a good way to play the game. You could absolutely, and may, as a new player, that could be a fantastic strategy is go, I got all these stellar jades at the start from my achievements, etc. Get Acheron, get her light cone, and bam, I've got like a, a S tier DPS, S plus probably tier DPS forever locked into every team, right? <laughs> every team, it's going to be her. Um, that's If you enjoy playing that way, then that's amazing. For me, I prefer having the variety of characters. Uh, so I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want to get a light cone. I'd rather get another new character, especially when I don't have any of the characters. It's more fun to get more characters. So I, that's not something I wanted to do. And her light cone is really, really strong. So that's off-putting to me. 
free to play options for the light cone. Like I see people saying, just use a good night, sleep well. Like I don't have a good night, sleep well. Ironically, I do have Welt's light cone, which I, I got from just the random, the, the standard five-star banner, which is a really good budget option. So I'm good for that, but it could easily be a lot of free to play, newer players in the same spot as me. Now that, that won't have any good light cone for her. It could be tough. Um, so that's a big thing. Let me switch over this video here. All right, here's another fun one. I actually went and got the, the final a a6 trace for bailu after after this so that was quite fun um yeah uh, so let's go it so yeah that, that was the thing for akron i think akron's set is also awkward to get like jing yuan set it's in there alongside the dot set right the follow-up set his best set that's much easier to farm with much better value than the akron set the akron set is, seems pretty awkward to get again for a newer player it's not in an amazing cavern for a lot of characters so it's a little bit tricky again for a newer player. But yeah, all that stuff was adding up and I was kind of looking at Akron going, she looks amazing. I mean, who knows? I might get sucked into the hype and still pull for her anyway. But I said, you know what? I've got the sparkle. Jing Yuan seems to be a lot stronger than the haters say. Even if he's not the best, he's super fun. Uh, the Lightning Lord, that's something worth mentioning. Playing around Lightning Lord, is it's a unique mechanic. It's super cool. There's always potential for this to grow as well in the future. Like Ting Yun, she is just a four-star. There could be another five-star support that's really good with him. I mean, any support in the future that interacts with things like, I don't know, Numbi from Topaz and Numbi or the Lightning Lord, anything that buffs like summons, as it were, that's something that could potentially happen. And he could be, again, even stronger then. So there's lots of room for Jing Yuan to be great. Uh... Yeah, I, I had a, an amazing team for him, like already. He's easy to use, right? S, uh, E0, S0, throw him in, and he's been fantastic, both for single target and for AoE, right? I've got Dr. Ratio covering single target stuff. And that's another weird thing. Like, I've Some people I, I have been like, oh, you should, should have gone for Imbibitor Lune instead. I think that doesn't really make sense to me. Imbibitor Lune, I've already got Dr. Ratio. I've got an amazing imaginary damage dealer right there already. Uh, Imbibitor Lune, Lune is just imaginary. And yeah, it seems kind of weird. It's one of those things. People are like, oh, well, Jing Yuan really, really wants Sparkle to do his best. That sucks. Oh, but Imbibitor Lune, well, with Sparkle, he does so much damage. It's amazing. It's like, but it's the same thing. They both work extremely well with Sparkle. But for Imbibitor Lune... That's the best thing in the world. For Jing Yuan, it's a massive downside. It's like, what are you, what? Well, come on. That's, that's not fair. That's not fair. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a big part of it. Um, and I actually think looking forward as a new player in 2.1, I think because Akron looks a bit dodgy from free to play, I think she's totally fine to go for. I, I think she's great. She's really good to go for. But Aventurine might actually be better. So that's probably what I'm going to go for. It's probably the Aventurine. Um... Yeah, I think probably going for Aventurine is a smarter play. I've actually got a lot of passes, so that's a toss-up for me. I could grab Akron anyway, just because she's super cool, and I do like Nihility a lot. That could be fun. Uh, the smarter play is probably to go for Aventurine, um, because Dr. Ratio is already there on the account as a follow-up attacker. Aventurine synergized with a follow-up attack. That's really strong. Even Jing Yuan is a follow-up attacker. So we've got some really powerful synergies already with Aventurine, and it gives us a limited five-star sustain. So that's a huge deal. Um, we also have Jing Liu, Jing Liu uh, coming up as well in the same patch, uh, well, half of the patch, I should say, as Aventurine. And she is an amazing damage dealer as well, Jing Liu. Uh, where is she? So um, yeah, that's, that's a tricky one too, right? Uh, ice type, super cool. Um, really, really powerful as well. And I actually did pull Branya. I've got a Branya, and that becomes potentially a, a really powerful combo for me on my account. Run like a Sparkle, Ting Yun, and Jing Yuan on one team, and then potentially running, uh, and, and probably put that with, uh, with Adventuring if I was able to get him. And then on the other side, we could put in Jing Lu um, alongside Branya and whoever. I mean, I actually quite like Bailu as well. Bailu, another character that gets too much, too much hate. Bailu's actually been great. She's really good uh, at the start, certainly. 
certainly I'm sure she falls off later on, but there also, there were some MOC teams. Let me tell you, when I was looking at that as well, there is a few MOC teams, not many, obviously the limited sustains are better, but there's a few with Japard and Bailu. They are not characters to sleep on and, and look at as completely useless. Certainly not. Um, yeah, there we go. Look, that's all I wanted to say about Jing Yuan. Would I recommend for you to come in and go, wow, I just saw this video. Let me pull for Jing Yuan right now before Akron comes out. No, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, in fact, personally, uh, I would say you only have like a day to think about it. It's not enough time to make a good decision. I think it would be much safer for you to not pull for Jing Yuan and to have time to think about where you want to put your pulls. In fact, I probably do a video on that in the next couple of days, like looking at it in terms of you know a low spend or free to play player, how many passes I'm getting and what sort of stuff you know, as a newer player, it's going to be good on, you know, an account that doesn't have everything, but we've got a free doctor ratio until the end of 2.1, right? This upcoming patch tomorrow, until the end of that, we've got a free doctor ratio. Like, it's the sort of good things to look at. I think Adventurine is a really good one. Uh, it's good synergies there, and it gives you a limited sustain. I think that's very strong. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, again, I went for Jing Yuan. I'm super happy with it. He has been fantastic so far. He's a, he's a great champion. Very flexible, very versatile, super cool. Yeah, I, I, I'm i really happy. You know, I can't complain. And uh, I think that's a bit of a lesson for the game as well, right? That there's so much hype about the new characters. Uh, old characters are maybe a bit boring. They're old, not as fun. But um, I don't think it's a, as extreme as like one is a 10 out of 10 and one's a zero out of, out of 10. I don't think that's accurate at all. Um, and yeah, uh, Jing Yuan, he's been a beast. So yeah, if you like a character, you know, check out the stats, see what teams are good. Does it fit on your account? And if they're good and they fit and you, you like them, you can go for them and you can actually potentially find good success. Maybe I'll look back on this in a, in a couple of months and be like, what was I thinking? But I don't think so. I don't think so. We'll see. Thanks for watching though. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.